But you left out to find you another home By the time you hear this will be back in Alabama I can't take the thought of you with another man I swear What's up, everybody? Jason back with Campbell's Morel Music Rig Rundown. It's big episode 20, and we had a we had a big episode planned for tonight, and I'm gonna call him out tonight for not being able to show up. Uh, we had Don Eanes scheduled for tonight, but uh, you know he's big and famous and too busy for us, I guess, for right yep. now. So uh, we'll get what we call uh, Don Eanes <laughs> as as called Jason, uh, you know, the next best organ player in the area. <laughs> Or, or maybe maybe better than Don Eanes. I think you're better than Don Eanes. <laughs> but anyway, so we're going to give Don a lot of hell tonight yeah. and uh, talk about him and, yeah. and talk about your gear. And uh, But y'all y'all recognize this man, I'm sure. If you're in Johnson City, you're in the music scene, you've played his venue. So uh, he books Capones. He plays in Dime Store Cowboys. He plays in Strange Gods. He's played in a lot of bands over the years. And uh, we, we may mention them, we may not, it doesn't matter. It really, I don't guess. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, give it up for Jason Vapor. Thank and, you, uh, thank you for having me. Oh, no, no problem. I'm I mean, glad. I'd be here anyways. I mean, uh, you're here anyhow. He's usually behind the camera. Yeah. And we got his girlfriend, Goldie, behind the camera today. Yeah. And she's filming this, so if it doesn't look good, it's her fault. Yes. <laughs> and she's uh, flipping me a bird. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, yeah, we... Uh, the wish.com Don Eanes. Yes. The great value Don Eanes. So if you're looking for a key player and you can't afford Don, uh, hit me up. Next best option. Yeah. No, he's, he's great. He's, he's really good with synths and uh, all this uh, modular systems and gotten into the organs and keys and, man, really taken off. And he plays, you know, with me in the dime store and it, it's added a whole nother dimension. Thank you. I think... Uh, when we first talked about it, I was asking you about getting like one of those Getty Lee foot things. Oh yeah, that's you know? what I was trying to get you to do. And yeah, yeah, I was like, I can have one of those foot things where I can play organ notes. And I was like, wait a minute, won't you just come join the band and play organ? Because so I didn't know how to play organ at the time. I mean, but I yeah, just, you've learned it on the fly, and it's it's yeah. great. Hey, one thing you do have in common with Don, y'all both play this Krumar. Yes, we do both play the Mojo Sixty One. I mean, it's pretty much the the best hands down organ. I mean, for being lightweight, portable, traveling, gig to gig, I mean, 27 pounds. So, I mean, you can't beat it. Yeah. Made in Italy. So, it's, I mean, hands down, it's got the best B3 sounds. If you don't have, if you don't want to lug a bunch of furniture around with your Hammond B3 and Leslie, get one of these Mo Cremar Mojos and it's, it's the best there is. Oh, yeah. I used to have that old uh, Hammond, what was that? The, kx3 which was great too a portable ham and electronic but you know that thing weighed 98 pounds before it was in a road case yeah. so when i saw the weight on this and just the portability yeah i mean it's just i mean it's got <laughs> leslie sounds good draw bars everything so everything in this like is it like Bluetooth compatible and you can do all kinds of different? Yeah, it does have a Bluetooth. Uh, I've got the Bluetooth dongle in it there somewhere. I'm sure you can see it blinking. I can hook it up to my phone and I can modify the B3. You can age it. I mean, you can make it have leaky caps. So, and, you know, it sounds weird. I mean, and then you could decide what uh, amp you have driving your Leslie, which I use a Marshall JCM 800 is what I have on the app to drive it. So whenever I click the drive on it, it... It gets that nasty, deep oh, purple, yeah. Yeah. smoke on the water sound. So, and then it has other options too. I mean, it's got like the church organ. It's got the old combo organs, and then Rhodes. I use that with a phaser for one of our songs, you know. Oh, yeah. So, 
very versatile on yeah. a lot of stuff. You can get about anything you need out of that one one machine right there for oh, sure. Yeah. And uh if you if y'all have ever seen a Hammond and got the draw bars and, and just you know it it I guess draw bars kinda add different frequencies and mid ranges and I don't know what all it they adds do. your harmonics and because uh, it basically everything's an octave on an organ you're playing several different octaves and adds the see the black draw bars are your evens and the white draw bars are your odds so that adds different harmonics oh, different you. octaves and just different levels of it all together and that's with all the draw bars in start adding some lows Oh, I see it, yeah. And then other harmonics. Yeah. It's like almost like a harmonious pedal, you know, adding yeah. different texture and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So it adds a fullness to it. Okay, and then this also has tons of presets, so I could actually save different presets with different draw bars. But, I mean, playing the country, southern Appalachian rock and roll we play, you know, it's pretty mm. much set it and forget it on that. And then it also has the chorus and the vibratos that the old ones have, too, where you can get different... Oh yeah. And then the Leslie, of course, with your slow, all the way up to your fast, and then the stop and Leslie all together. Yeah. <clears throat> and basically you're just working a volume pedal with that thing? Yep. Or, gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah, if y'all are, if y'all love that, that B3 road in road sounds and the B3 sounds and, I mean, I don't think there's a better Nah. instrument out there now nah, this is pretty much the best and i mean a lot of bands that travel through capones that have organ players this is what they're traveling the with this is what don travels with i know there's several other local bands that have them bands and a lot of the jam bands in Asheville that have organ players that's where i first saw these before don even got mentioned one. it yeah. yeah yeah don you know don's got a whole uh couple of storage units full of uh, b3s up there probably but he still chooses the crew mar yeah, well, uh, I mean, for the most part, unless I he's mean, got somebody loading it for him. He's out with Morgan now, so he's got a crew. So, I mean, I saw some videos where he actually had a B3 on oh, stage. Yeah. So, I mean, if somebody else is carrying it for if you, if somebody's going to carry it, take your B3 and your Leslie. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Don, we hope you're watching this episode because we're going to rag you to death yeah. tonight. And uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> something new that you've kind of added here forget to get some different textures and different sounds and stuff so i guess we'll talk about that yeah i added the xenthian which is a uh, kit which actually i bought and built uh beginning of covid so 2020 it's from spain and it's basically a digital synth running on a raspberry pi so you can do all kinds of different things it has dx7s all kinds of vintage synths in it but what i'm using it for right now is basically i'm using it to emulate uh mellotron so I've got the, what do I have on there? I've got the M400 cello sounds on it. So basically I'm just using a MIDI controller, the Arturia, the Keystep 37, which is really cool because it has the strum and chord feature. So yeah. I just, I could be playing a low note over here and just adding a little bit to it. So I can get the organ and the key and the cellos, yeah. violins, whatever. And if you don't know what the old Mellotrons were, the Mellotrons were a uh, early, I guess you could call it an early sampler kind of, because it basically had a bunch of tape loops in it. So when you'd hit a key, it would play the tape loop oh, okay. of whatever instrument it was in that pitch. Yeah. So, but basically everything's digitized now and the they do have digital mellotrons with the samples and everything and uh, actually don's playing <laughs> on tour with uh, yeah, yeah. morgan wade he's yeah. got one i was like man i really don't want to spend the money on buying one of those i really want to have it sounds great it would add a lot so then the synthian box that i built a long time ago and was haven't used i was like it. oh there you go so yeah and uh yeah that little midi controller like i said and it's got the strum chord features and all oh, that yeah. stuff you can do all kinds of chord patterns and whatever you want to with it really and it uh, fits right on top of my mojo 61 so it keeps everything nice and compact so i'm not carrying a bunch of gear yeah yeah, yeah. unless you're don ains and got people carry yeah it. i don't have anybody to carry it for me carry stuff for me don, i wish tory would tory the guitar player in dime store i mean he should carry my gear since he I'm should. the oldest but you know he doesn't he, he barely want to even carry his own uh, amp he usually just says screw you boomers i mean yeah th those are, that's his favorite <laughs> phrase <laughs> 
<laughs> and then uh, I, I run a pedal board now with the Synthian, basically, just for the you. Mellotron sounds. And a uh, pretty simple setup. I've got an octave pedal. I can switch it on and... Just add a little more thickness, a couple more octaves right. to it. Uh, TC Electronic Fang, which is a uh, HM2 clone. If I want to add just crazy, crazy chainsaw, distortion. Yeah. black metal distortion, there you go. The TC Electronics uh, June 60, which is the Juno chorus. I'm a big fan of the Juno chorus, the Junos in general. I do play a Juno X and Strange Gods mm -hmm. in my other rig. And uh, the Deadbeat Electronics, the Delay Station, and the Reverb Station basically just add some delay and reverb yeah and by the looks of those pedals those are probably mode clones yeah well they're not really they they clone like the look of them but uh those are actually just based on the fv1 spin chips okay which is a, a dsp that you know electro harmonics and uh, earthquaker jhs a lot of them use them for their like modulation reverb gotcha. and delays it's pretty much the best dsp for that type of effect yeah it was a great, great <clears throat> company. He built high quality stuff and he went out of business like a year and a half ago and some liquidation company bought his entire stock in Atlanta and then they were selling those for like $35 each. Oh yeah. On uh, nice. Reverb. So I those jumped cool on it and bought them. They sound yeah. great. Yeah, it sound really good. I mean, just for, there's several different options for delays and reverbs, reverses and all kinds of stuff. So I can get wild if I need to. Yeah. And the, the little looper thing you got on here, is that just for like practicing? Looper, yeah, for stuff at home. Like if I'm I'm just making ambient noise and stuff, I'll lay down, you know, first gotcha. track, just loop over it and make noise. I still make noise and do the Gloom Mountain Gospel thing, the ambient stuff yeah. with Goldie. We yeah. do that together. We haven't done it in a while, but we're uh -huh. getting back at it. Yeah, I mean, if, if y'all been around Vapor for a long time, I mean, he's, he's built pedals and he's built synths and... He's got one huge modular setup, yeah. you know, that he can bring out and create a bunch of sounds that it's just insane. And speaking of the modular stuff, I was blown away. The uh, the keyboard player, I can't remember his name right now, of uh, Jason Isbell's band. Oh, yeah. Unit. He's <clears throat> a massive modular guy. And I found that out watching some... Um, watching that documentary yeah. about him and stuff and showing what he was doing over COVID and he was tweaking a modular setup. I was like, oh, I'm not the only country organ player with modular. <laughs> modular yeah. There's a, there's always a little bit deeper background with some of those those guys that, you know, we all, we're all playing this, this country, alt rock, alt country kind of thing right now, but it's, we all got like punk. Right. Oh yeah, we all Metal. have yeah have our roots. Yeah, my roots. My, my roots are in punk. You yeah, know, playing guitar, starting at 12, 13 years old. But I think I think that's what makes good good country yeah. music sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, and then we can't can't forget my amp. The newest amp. Yes, you, as you can see with my hat, I'm a massive supporter of PV. I've always played PV. Got a PV KB 300, which is totally awesome. 300 watts of just solid state. PV power. PV power. So, and it's three channel, built in reverb, which I don't use, but I mean, it's an awesome amp and newest edition. And take it to the gigs where I, I can use a bigger amp. I mean, a lot of our gigs are small, and I'm just taking a little monitor. But yeah, that thing you can you can uh, you could blow us out right now if you really wanted. Oh to. yeah, if I really wanted to. I mean, that's barely on anything. And it's still it's still got still good volume. <laughs> So yeah. that's basically it. That's basically it for my rig. The whole really rig. Impressive. And, and uh, you know, this this is like what you're using mainly for dime store, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah for the most part. Yeah. And uh, for uh, with Strange Gods, I know you use a different keyboard. Yeah, I use the uh, Roland Juno X and I use a Roland uh, SP404. The new, what was that, the 404X? Mark II or, or something. Mark II, yeah, yeah. Mark II. Which I use basically that just for intros and samples throughout the songs, a little bit of percussion stuff. But mainly all my sounds for Strange Gods are on the Roland Juno X. Gotcha. Yeah, and uh, y'all be sure to check out Strange Gods too. We'll throw a link up for them also. And uh, Dime Store Cowboys. And we got, you know, this will, our, let's see, we'll already play a show after this air. So we'll, yeah. we're playing casino tomorrow night. But, uh, and then we got uh, Heavy in the Holler next weekend. Yes, Heavy in the Holler, that is June 3rd, I think. 3rd, yes, yeah. Saturday. So that's in Irwin. Uh, if you got a van and you want to come out and hang out up there at uh, Red Rocks uh, campground. campground in 
the USA Red places. Banks. Red Banks, yeah. Yes. We're Party. not playing Red Rocks yet. No, not yet. Really. <laughs> you know what? If we got to play Red Rocks, I just, I don't know what I'd do. I mean. I mean, I'd be there. I, I Man, if I played Red, has, has Don Eanes played Red Rocks I yet? don't know if Don has played Red Rocks. Don, have you played Red Rocks? Red Rocks, comment on this post. I mean, if I get to play Red Rocks before Don, I think you should at least just haul my gear in for me. He should. He should but be your if he tech. plays, I mean, if he plays, I mean, I will go out with Don anytime. Anytime you need a tech, just we're there for you. I'm yeah. there. Uh, but yeah, we're playing Red Banks and Irwin. <laughs> yeah. That's a little bit far away from Red yeah. Red Rocks, but uh, it's a it's a great uh, festival that happens every year. It's called Heavy Holler. It's a it's a custom van show, and they uh, they got some great vans. Great people hanging out and just cooking out and having some music. Us and the Gutter Frogs, I think. Yeah, yeah, it'll be and, fun. Uh, and we're just taking our normal blue van. Yeah. Nothing custom, nothing, nothing fancy, but. Hey, we got a we van. We got a van, yeah. Even if you don't have a van, come out and join us. And then we have some other gigs coming up. Uh, definitely the big one we're looking forward to is Greenville's Fourth of July celebration. That'd be on July first in Greenville. Yes. Uh, we're playing. We're right before right before the headliner and fireworks, I think. Yeah. From what I understand so far, yeah. So that'll be a real big one. And then we got um, uh, Elizabeth and Covered Bridge. Yep. And August, uh, Meet the Mountains. Well, we got Riverfest. Oh, first, we got Dog first Days. First weekend in August, yeah. Dog Days, Riverfest, and then Meet the Mountains. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, it'll be about Rhythm and Roots time after that. Yeah, so. and we're playing Rhythm and Roots again this year, too. So yeah, come check us out. Um, if, if you haven't checked out our album, Dime Store, uh, Let's try this again. Uh, we're pretty proud of that album and mm -hmm. recorded it there at Classic Studios with Mikey. Yeah, Mikey's awesome. And he uh, made me sound good. <laughs> he makes everybody sound he good. He does. And uh, I don't know how he does it. I mean, I knew if he'd make Don sound that good, then he could do something. Yeah, he could do me. something. <laughs> <laughs> I did play. You know, There you go, I played. <laughs> now that, that thing's got a great B3 town. I mean, it's crazy how. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean. <laughs> we, uh, of course, if you come here on Saturdays too, you'll see Jason in here a lot of times working. Yeah. And at Campbell's also. So, uh, like I said, well, this will already air after our art festival. But um, we got an art festival on the 27th of May, and uh, it features Dylan Rutherford and Joey Metcalf of making some great art. But y'all take that art that you gather from those guys, you go see Jason, and he can print this stuff on shirts, hats, mugs. Yeah, I'm doing the mugs now, the tumblers. We can do buttons, we can do yeah. stickers. We buttons, can... I mean, I, I made myself a button today with Mr. Jason Schaefer's picture on it. And you know, that, yeah, I'm cool. Uh, so, uh, anything merch related that you need for your band, we got a great local source here in Jason. And he, I mean, he makes great products and prints. He does sublimation and he does um, screen, printing. screen printing also. And um, yeah, if you, most local bands know, already know this, but uh, if you don't, I mean, use him because he, he knows what he's doing. He's been doing it a long time. I have. I'm <laughs> old. I've been doing a lot of stuff a long time. Me and you both are old. Yeah. And uh, this, I mean, this this episode, we always say, well, this is going to be kind of weird, me interviewing him, because we, you know, this is kind of thing that we've created. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Don, for dropping out on us at last minute and making forcing this me to forcing be on this side Jason of the camera. To, yeah. So uh, but he's done great on this, and uh, it sounds great. Uh, Campbell's Memorial Music, and I know Vapor would never shop anywhere else. Oh, I love this place. And I mean, I was thinking about this today because I've lived in Johnson City. I moved from Texas a long time ago, lived here for a long time. Didn't come in here that often for quite a while, just because growing up in Dallas in the big city as a punk rock kid, punk rock guitar player, always had bad experiences going into guitar stores because you get judged by those long-haired guitar players that are like, oh, I'm Eddie Van Halen, and you know how to play a couple power chords. You know, you're not worth my time. 
and then start hanging out in here after I know all you guys. And, you know, we don't treat anybody that way here. Yeah. Everybody, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or whatever. I mean, we, it doesn't matter if you're a drummer. We're still going to talk to you, <laughs> you know? So uh, it, it's the, the vibe here is very supportive of all, all genres, everything. I mean, just all mm. styles of music, all, all levels. I mean, we don't, we don't judge anybody. Yeah. You know, or treat people differently if you're, you know. And I, and I think that starts at the top with Dave. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you can't get any better. There's than nobody Dave. in better, Dave. No. no. I mean, and Dave bends over backwards for every musician in here. Yeah. yeah. That comes in here. I mean. Yeah, he's done a lot for a lot of people. Yeah. And uh, you can ask Dave Charlie about that. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I appreciate Dave, too. I mean, like you said, I work here on uh, lots of Saturdays whenever people need time off and stuff. And, you know, and Dave welcomed me in like family. And, you know, even though I just I, I nap a lot on <laughs> Saturdays when I'm here because I'm usually leaving the club at 430 in the morning yeah. after closing that job, coming in here at 10 a.m. So Dave's nice enough to let me nap occasionally. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. Uh, we started this thing, you know, it's hard to believe this is the 20th episode. Yes. And uh, we didn't know where this was going to go or where, how this is going to take off, but it's gained probably a pretty good following Oh, now. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I know we've, from the YouTube subscribers we've had, it's really picked up and a lot of people enjoy watching these things. And, and you know, me and him are, are not getting a dime for this. And we're just doing this because, one, we love this store. Two, we love local bands and we yes. love local music. I don't care what genre or what who you are i mean we're going to support you yeah and once you get out there and do this thing because i mean you know we always say you know if you're going to be a musician you're probably probably an idiot anyhow because oh, you're yeah. not going to make any money yeah but it's just for the love of the thing thing you're doing we love music we love gear <clears throat> i mean me and you have definitely have a problem with gear we, I mean, uh, yeah as you we know. trade gear probably more than anybody else yeah. so. except for broback i mean broback trades <laughs> yeah. yeah he trades every other day yeah, that's, but, uh, that's where this came from. Yeah. But uh, we definitely want to continue to support this local local music scene, push all these local uh, bands. And, uh, you know, y'all, you know, I'm, I'm pretty proud of the Dime Store Cowboys. It's something we started about 15 years ago, and it's kind of evolved in something a little different than where it started, but it's it's fine. It, it, I love where it's at. And, yeah. uh, uh, we got young blood in the band. And, we got young you know, blood. And, we're, it, we're trying to show them the ways. It's helping us out a lot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we got a, another little band uh, project that me and Vapor's been working in that's playing a, a first show in June, and yes. it's called Appalachian Death Cult. Some heavy stoner Just metal. Uh, it's going to be loud. I mean, I might, I might bring eight, two 810s for that show. Yeah. But, uh, so y'all, you know, we've got a little Facebook and Instagram going on, Appalachian Death Cult. So y'all yeah. check those out. Check, check out Strange Gods. They've been around a while and they they're loud we've had a few members of strange gods on here we've had bram and uh nathan nathan have both yeah. done it i need to get dakota in here oh actually we have jonathan next week oh god we really do yeah we have another bass player coming uh, in next week i'm usually excited about bass players it's jonathan i mean it'll be nah, jonathan's great love jonathan. <laughs> but uh thanks for uh hanging out with us tonight uh y'all come shop campbell's Y'all show some local bands some support. We love y'all. We're out. Love you.
as fast as I could I thought that would be the best Cause my uncle was killed and the guy shot my 